so I went to my, my primary doctor, and as I got a chance to go to him, I, you know, try to make sure I go every year, especially being in the medical field as a chaplain and working in the hospitals and in, in, in hospice spaces. Um, talking to my primary care physician, and he was telling me about my, after doing the blood work, he was just saying that my PSA levels were, were a little bit elevated. And so um, he was a little bit concerned, so he said, well, you know, the next time we'll check it. So came back the following year, checked it again, and when he checked it, it was even higher, so it's supposed to be 4.0 and lower. And so when that happened, he said, you know, I think that you should go see uh, a urologist. And so I went to go see a urologist, and when I did that, what happened was the urologist in their office, they do a different set of tests, and so he did this different test. And when he did that, um, he called me and he said, I just want to let, let you know that you tested positive for prostate cancer. So it took me a little while to, to process it and to try to figure out, you know, wow, I have this, this thing growing inside my body, you know, and so how am I going to deal with this? You know, what's going to be going on with me? And, you know, is it going to be something where it's going to be fatal to me? Is it going to be something where, you know, I have to have a surgery or what options do I have and that type of thing? So, you know, all these different things are running through my mind. And as they're running through my mind, I'm, I'm telling myself, you know, that it's going to be all right because I have God on my side. That's a, that's a really great question. And it's, it's, a, it's a long process for me, but what I did was I, I told the people, I prayed about it first. My wife and I, we, you know, we were saying, you know, how, how are we going to deal with this? And let me say one thing before I, I move over to that. My wife, Patricia, hey, Patricia, how you doing? I want to say that Throughout this entire process, she has been so important to me. Unfortunately, her first husband uh, died of cancer as well. And while he was going through his battle, he was, he was somebody who, who wanted to face the challenge, unfortunately, by himself because he was like, you know, I got it, you know, and that type of thing. And she asked me because she was, she was kind of worried when I first told, told her about it. She was like, you know, What's going to happen as you go through this process? Do you want me to be involved? And the reason why she asked that is because of what happened in the first, the first time. And so I told her, I said, no, this is a decision that we're going to make as a family. We're going to go through this together. You know, I was there when you went through what you went through, and now I know that you're going to be here for me. So we made that decision as a family. And so as making a decision for our family, what we decided to do was to tell people that was close to us first. So we told, of course, the immediate family on both sides. And then after that, we started telling the, the friends, the real close friends that we have around us. And then after that, we waited a little bit longer. Then we started telling people at the church. And then I started telling people at my job, both jobs. And as I started to do that, it's like it, it gave me the ability to not feel like I was just being bombarded with a bunch of questions and everything. Because I know how, you know, with, with, with a lot of people, when you hear cancer, you know, it, it can be scary, you know. And, you know, I'm not, you know, sitting up here saying that, you know, I, I was 100% with everything. Because, like I said, it did take some time. It was a process. But I had to do everything in steps. And I had to do things the way it felt comfortable for me and for my wife. Um, it, was, it was a situation where if I, if I did it too much all at one time, I, I, I feel like I would have been taken out of my comfort zone that, you know, not knowing, you know, how everything is going to go or play out or what people's feelings were. So, so it, it, it was a process, but it just it took some time. And once I did that, I felt better about, okay, I told these people I can breathe a little bit. I told them I can breathe a little bit. I told them so I can answer these questions for them as much as I know, and then we're going to keep moving. So, like, even now I know that I'm still, you know, uh, answering questions for people, but it, it doesn't feel overwhelming. So the process has been pretty much smooth. And I thank God for that. So, and I believe in, the, in, the, in, in that, you know, totally answering your question and, and being forthright, I believe that without God, I would have been a lot more unbalanced. I would have been a lot more uh, rambling about what's going on and not standing on God's word, knowing that he's going to take care of this all as I go through this. And so I feel like, you know, God has walked me through this entire time. I don't feel tired. I don't feel weary. I don't feel like, you know, um, like I'm like I'm overwhelmed. And it's to the point where, 
you know, I start doing some negative things because that's one of the things that a lot of people do when they hear a bad report. When you hear something that's going on in your body or, or you know, or, 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 you know, relationships and that type of thing, it throws people off where they start drinking, they start, you know, doing drugs, they, 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 they do other, other things, they start harming people, um, you know, assaulting people and doing all these crazy things. So I just praise God for him being able to be there for me, be in my life, where I know that as long as I stay in God, everything will be fine. And if I wasn't a Christian or even the people that I talk to that aren't Christians, I tell them about what's going on and give them my testimony. Um, I know that they're praying for me as well, but also I'm praying that that's going to be something that can hopefully lead them to Christ, knowing that as they go through situations, that they can handle it and they can get through it because of who, who God is in our life. Well, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is, in the Bible is Nahum 1 and 7. And it says, um, it, it basically says that God knows who to trust. God is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. And so that is, a, that is a scripture that I stand on all the time. That is something that I believe that God says that, listen, as you go through what you're going to go through, because a lot of times what people believe that as Christians, we believe that we're not going to go through anything. We believe that, okay, life is going to be perfect and that type of thing. The Bible has 66 books in it. And I've never heard or read one scripture in the Bible that said that the Christian would not go through anything. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please tell me because I, I would like to know that. But I don't know a scripture in the Bible where it says that we're not going to go through something. So God is a stronghold in our time of need. God is a stronghold saying that you're going to go through something, my son. You're going to go through something, my daughter. But I'm going to be here with you. He said in his word that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So as we go through these things, I challenge people to stand on the word of God and knowing that everything that we deal with is not about our emotions, because a lot of people, they, they, they put our emotions, we put our emotions in it and we say, oh, my God, this is going on. Oh, that's going on. No, we can't. We can't put your emotions in. We have to take the emotion out and we have to stand firmly on the word of God and say, God, I give this all to you. And as I as I give it to you, I know that you're going to you're going to take care of it. A lot of times what we, what we want to do is we take the experiences that we have and we say, well, God, with these things over here, I can take care of these things over here, so I don't, I don't need you over here. But this stuff over here, I need you to take care of this, right? We can't do that. What we have to do is we have to take everything that we do and we have to give it all to God. And that's, that's what I, I firmly believe. That's why I can preach and minister the way that I, I minister because even though I went to theology school at Mercy University, I wouldn't say that I'm the most theological person, but I do know that when it comes to praise and worship and knowing who God is, I stand firmly in believing in the miracles of God, and I stand firm in believing that God is a healer, that he is a healer, and he's going to take us through everything, and we're going to make it through it all because of the God that we serve. Well, you know, she was, you know, definitely, you know, one, you know, the first person besides, you know, my wife and, you know, um, that, I, that I definitely talked to. So I talked to her and, of course, my, my father back home in Miami. And, um, and so my mom, uh, Evangelist Averia Webb, she's gone through colon cancer. Um, she had um, uh, ovarian cancer. Then also she had breast cancer. So she's survived all, all three of those. And so, you know, again, Going back for one thing, again, this, this is such an important topic, and I'm so glad that we got a chance to really touch on this, and early detection is a must, period. So, so you know, a lot of times, you know, man, we don't want to go to the doctor. We don't want to get checkups. We don't want to go through all these different things, and I'm praying that there's some young men that's out there as well that will start to get checkups and, and see a doctor because it's, it's just so important, and you just, you just never know what could happen because cancer, you know, a lot, a lot of times these days, especially with you know, the different things that we eat and we put into our bodies and that type of thing. We don't know why our bodies uh, react to, to what it does at times, but, you know, things can happen in, in younger people as well. So there's never a limit of, on people who should be getting tested or, or seeing, seeing a doctor. So I just want to say that. And then, uh, but my mother was really, you know, someone who said, you know, son, it's going to be all right. Stick with the word. You know, she's, <laughs> she's very, very, um, you know, um, 
impressed by what God does. You know, she'll never talk about who she is or whatever. She's always talking about the word and about what God does. And so I, I appreciate her for being able to, you know, walk with me. You know, she says, you know, you know, anything that I need, you know, she'll she'll be there, of course. And of course, my dad, you know, Joseph Jr., you know, in Miami, he, you know, he's the same thing. He's one of those types that, you know, he he's he, he'll he'll if it, if it's if it's him that's going through something, ah, it'll be all right, it'll be all right, it'll be all right, no worries. You know, he had a hip replacement some uh, last year, I mean, a year or so ago, and he got through that, and like right after his hip replacement, like he's getting ready to try to get out the bed and walk again and everything. But when it comes to his children or people that's around him, you know, he he you know he was a little bit concerned about it and everything. But I'm like, Dad, it's okay. You know, the, the cancer is localized. It's in stage one. I know everything is going to be all right because, again, I have a, a God that I believe in, but also, you know, the technology and the way things are today, you know, we can, uh, we can live, you know, you know, long through that. And so going through this process, after seeing the urologist, I got a chance to see three different urologists before my wife and I prayed about it and made a decision that we was going to do. Saw the three different urologists, got a plan. You know, they said basically... It would it be in a stage one, I can do nothing right now, or I can go, it can be all the way up to surgery. So, uh, you know, we decided to um, go through the radiation treatment. So we're going to go through that um, and not have the surgery right now because, it was, like I said, the cancer was only on one side of the prostate. So that's what we're looking at. You know, I know that to some people it might seem daunting. I've heard so many stories from different men about what, what, they, what they've gone through. And that's one of the things, I have some frat brothers uh, that, that's going through some of the same things that I'm going through right now, or you know, just uh, they've already you know, gone through it to, to ring the bell saying that they don't have cancer in, anymore. So um, I just thank God for my, my parents. I thank God for friends that, that, that are around me. I have a bunch of minister friends, people in the church that's been praying for, uh, for me and, and for my family and everything. So I just praise God for everybody. And I just wanna say, people, please, get checked. You have to get checked. This is, this is something serious. I have another frat brother, one of my frat brothers, he said he, was a, he was, hadn't gone to the doctor in about four years. And with not going to the doctor in four years, he said what he, what, what he did was he was listening to Will Smith and Will Smith did something where he actually went and got checked. And he saw, the, saw this video that Will Smith was in and he said that when, when the doctor talked to Will Smith, Will Smith had this face, like he said, like, wow, like I, I have some kind of cancerous something, something, something. And Will Smith was like, whoa, like, and so my, 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 my frat brother Leonard was like, hey man, if it can happen to Will Smith and he, have all, he has all this money and everything, it can happen to anybody. So he was like, I need to go check, get checked. So he went that following week when he got checked. And, uh, and so now he's, you know, you know praise God, he's, he's making, his last, you know, times of, of doing his radiation treatment and everything. So I, I thank God for him being able to get through it. So I just want to say to everybody, I'm doing fine. Everything is going to be well. I'm going to get back with everybody, in, in, you know, in one of our next broadcasts. Let everybody know and give everybody an update on what's going on. But I, I just praise God for what he's doing. I thank God for the strength that he's given me. And I thank God for all the people that he's placed around me and around my family to show us love during this time because it's so uh, it's such a blessing to know that I have great people around me that's, that's supporting me, you know, loving on me, asking me, hey, Joe, you know, how are you doing? No, Joe, I know you. How are you really doing? You know, and holding me accountable. So I praise God for that. And, uh, that's it, bro. So perfect, I'm glad that I know. Good from inception, I dis protection. We're born in the blood, so call us section. I'm here for it. Ooze and humidity, H2O rain, just call it liquidity. Verity calling, block us from falling. Hell is too real, stop the stupidity. Enemy looking, my God is still working. I'm blessing, I'm covered, it won't be no searching. Got faith is my